I'd like to show you another thing tree joining grammars can do. And as you can, we are now asked to write down a tree adjoining grammar that accepts a string language, which is A, B, C, D with A and C having the same amount and B and D having the same amount of occurrences. So we are able to generate string languages with some crossing dependencies or something like the copy language. And I will just give you an idea on how the tree adjoining grammar does this. So I like, when I write down a tree adjoining grammar, I like to start with, with a simple initial tree like this. And then I'm doing the same with adjunction trees. But there are, of course, uh, different possibilities. So then the first auxiliary tree that's supposed to generate the A's and C's shall look like this with an S node where we have a C hanging and a footnote. And I don't want to allow any adjoints here because I, then it won't work. So I write down NA as subscript, which means null adjoint. So I'm not allowed to adjoin into that node. And then well, my idea is to first generate all the A's and the C's and then going into another situation where I generate only B's and D's and I will, will never go back generating A's and C's because otherwise the string will be messed up. The, the letters will be mixed up in that case. So I write down another um, auxiliary tree which is similar to that one with another adjoin here, but with another with a node with another label in the middle, which is T, because if you have an auxiliary tree which has the where the root label must be the same as the foot label, and this one means we can only apply adjunctions into S nodes. So when I'm going when I have only a, a, another node, a T node left, then I'm not allowed to apply this adjunctions in this auxiliary trees with adjunctions into a T node. So for the B's and D's, now I add another auxiliary tree, which adds my B's and D's and has, of course, a footnote. Now, we have a problem because we are asked, it said that the amount of n's and m's shall be greater or equal than 1. But if we can start with that tree, we will have an empty word, which is where n and m's are 0. So what I'm doing is I'm writing another subscript here, which is OA, which means obligatory adjoin. So I'm forced to adjoin here. I'm not allowed to end the derivation in this tree. And also, well, that means now I could end after one adjunction of this tree or of this tree into that one, but I don't want that either because then we wouldn't have any B's or D's. So I'm going to that trees and writing down obligatory adjoints here and here as well. So I'm only supposed, I'm only allowed to end the derivation with one, with this tree, where the adjunction of this tree into another one is the last step. So I will have at least one B and one D. Now, how does this tree language, this tree adjoining grammar generate a string language? Let me just show you. I will start with this initial tree. I don't need to write down OA, but um, well, it helps in the derivation process to keep track of the node. Now I will adjoin this tree into that node. It means I will get another tree like this. and below that S, which is a footnote. I'm not allowed to adjoin in a footnote, so I don't need to write null adjoin into that. 
and here is what now hung below that note now hung, hangs below the footnote. Now I'm taking that tree and adjoin it into that one where I'm supposed to adjoin, so into that one. That means now I will get a new tree like this, where I included that tree. Below that there are the other parts of that tree. And here there is epsilon we had from the first tree. And now I will do another adjoin of this tree into, well, it's not pretty, into that node. And I hope I can fit it onto this page. I will get a tree like this. This is the part I kept from the previous derivations. Here, we, here now the this auxiliary tree was put in. So here I have B and D and the other T. And below that T there are parts of that tree. And parts of, of that tree. and the epsilon from the initial tree. And as you can see, I could go on including more b's and d's and they will also have, they will always have the same amount. And if you now look at the string language, we have a, a, b, c, c, d. And that's exactly the string language. Maybe you can see um, if I go on adjoining with either one of those auxiliary trees, I will um, at a, more A's and C's, and then with that tree, I'm including well the B's and D's. In the tree, it's um, it's in the middle, but compared to the string language, it looks like in it would be in the middle and at the end. So I hope I could give you an understanding of how tree adjoining grammar works. And well, this is the tree adjoining grammar for that string language with crossing dependencies.